Hi, I'm Sean from MICE. While there is various software available for cloning a hard disk to a solid state drive, in this video I'm going to demonstrate how this can be achieved using a live Linux operating system, in this case System Rescue CD, on a bootable USB stick, which is free to download and use. At present, you can see this laptop booting from the hard disk it came with, and despite just a few months of slight use, it does take a while to complete its boot process. Even with the desktop displayed, you can see that when I launch a few applications in sequence, it does take a while. As this is a pre-installed operating system, you can see that it has a recovery partition, in this case at the end of the disk. Usually it is safe to delete this, but as most laptops do not come with a recovery media, I'm going to show you how to keep this partition on the hard disk, but not on the solid state drive. This may be useful for those who have a large second partition with files that they would like to keep on their original hard disk. I have not tried this technique yet on a hard disk with a GUID partition table, such as the newer Windows 8 PCs generally use. To boot the live Linux USB or CD, look out for the boot menu key when the initial BIOS screen appears. This key may be the F9, F10 or F12 key, and on this laptop it's the enter key. On some newer computers of Windows 8 pre-installed, legacy BIOS mode must be enabled to boot from the USB or CD. I usually boot into System Rescue CD using the default option. One nice feature I like about this version is that it gives the ability to select the keyboard layout, as the Irish keyboard layout is different to the US keyboard layout. I have the solid state hard disk attached using a SATA to USB adapter. As the hard disk is several times larger than the solid state hard disk, the first thing we need to do is reduce the main partition so that it fits on the solid state hard disk. The reason I do this using Gparted is that the Windows often places unmovable files near the middle of the partition which means that Windows Disk Manager usually cannot reduce the partition beyond half its original size. However, Gparted has no problem doing this, as it moves files that Windows will otherwise not move. With the partition now within the boundaries of the target solid state drive, I'm going to clone the disk using DD Rescue, which does an exact one-to-one -one copy. The first thing I need to do is check what is the source and target. This is very important, as getting the two mixed up will lead to the original hard disk being overwritten by the blank solid state hard disk. 
as the original hard disk has a capacity of 500 gigabytes, dev SDA is clearly the source drive and the smaller drive dev SDC is the target. For the two drives of the same capacity, another way to tell them apart is to check which drive has partitions, as a solid state hard disk which is new is usually blank. In this case, I previously used a solid state hard disk so it still has partitions present. While the target drive does not need to be blank, anything it does contain will be overwritten, and some solid state hard disk enthusiasts insist on secure erasing the hard disk before reusing it. Although the recovery partition was clearly outside the solid state drive's boundary to get copied, this partition is still indexed in the partition table. Windows will not boot with a partition entry pointing outside the drive's boundaries. Although it may seem logical to use a partition editor to delete it, most treat this as a non-partitioned drive when you encounter a partition table pointing outside the drive's boundary. For example, when I launch Gparted, this drive shows up as blank. It's the same situation if I try using Windows Disk Manager on another PC with this drive connected as a secondary drive. Had this partition been deleted off the source drive before copying, this issue would not occur and it would boot up fine. One utility that can display the partition table is fdisk, so the first thing I need to do is display the partition table. So use fdisk to select the drive, then p to display the partition table, then type in d to delete a partition. As partition 3 is the last partition, this is the culprit and needs to be deleted. Finally, I type in w to save the change. Now the solid straight drive is ready to boot. The final step to type in is shutdown minus h0 to shut down the live Linux operating system. When the partition is resized and gparted, it triggers a check disk operating system. So this happens the first time the solid state drive is booted. As the solid state drive is a lot quicker than the hard disk, this process goes pretty quick. The first full boot usually takes longer as Windows has yet to configure itself for the solid state drive. As I was creating this guide, one issue I ran into is that this laptop has a 7mm height bay, but as I'm using a 9mm solid state hard drive, so for those wondering how we managed to fit it, I dismantled the solid state drive and put the PCB directly into the bay. While this may seem like a useful workaround to fitting a 9mm solid state drive into a 7mm height bay, it's worth noting that dismantling a solid state drive usually avoids any warranty on it, but may be useful to fit an older solid state drive laying around into a newer laptop. Once a new hardware process completes, it'll ask to reboot the computer. This time, the boot process is considerably quicker, with the graphical user interface shown before the animated panes merge together. With a clean Windows installation, the desktop may even appear without the welcome screen being shown at all. As we can see, the same four applications launch a lot faster now, with the browser homepages appearing within a few seconds. The final step I need to do is resize the partition so we make full use of the solid state drive. If you have any additional questions or need advice, please head over to mice at club.mice.com.